What's up everybody and welcome back to another video about the Division Boomsling here and as you all know the open beta is coming very soon February 18th to be exact for Xbox One and then February 19th for PC and PlayStation 4 and in case you didn't know the closed beta client will work for the open beta all you have to do is download an update which will then swap your closed beta client over to the open beta but anyways doing that release some patch notes and the first person to bring this to me was Twitter user at Lightforce, but it's also all over Reddit and everywhere else. And I'm going to leave a link in the description box below where you guys can go and check out the patch notes for yourself. But I want to just read out some of the more interesting patch notes. Apparently this open beta is going to have a little bit more content than the closed beta did. First off, there's going to be an entirely new mission to play, which is going to be the Subway Morgue, stating that you will encounter a new faction, the Cleaners. So in the closed beta, we got to play the Madison Garden mission where we had to go and rescue Jessica Candle from the rioters inside of there, which would then activate your medical wing. And in the Subway Morgue, it's saying that players will encounter the Cleaners. So apparently we'll be able to fight the Cleaners in this mission instead of the rioters. And in this mission, we will explore a mass grave while trying to restore power to to the city and rescue the missing engineer Paul Rhodes. If you guys completed the, one of the missions on the Division website, it would give you intel on some of these people in the game and you got to see a clip of them in one of the videos that they released. This guy is the head of the tech wing in the base of operations and by rescuing him we get to unlock the first upgrade in the tech wing. So this is entirely new as opposed to the closed beta and by doing this we will also unlock a new skill, the deployable turret. So in the open beta we will now be able to play around with the deployable turrets so this is definitely going to mix things up give us some new gameplay options some new content to experiment with and give us more of an idea of what the division is going to be about in the full game with more skills and things like that a few more things to go over they patched a lot of things in the dark zone and apparently they fixed a lot of issues that people had they definitely addressed one of the major issues that I had with it but anyway let's go over a few of the things that they have fixed or changed or are going to be added for the open beta starting off there are going to be some new high-end weapons available in the dark zone so either the caduceus and the cassidy shotgun are going to be replaced or they're going to simply add to the inventory not sure what guns they're going to be but i will definitely go in there and check them out and make a video when i do find out also the refresh rate on the dark zone chest has been greatly reduced so maybe we'll be able to actually open some of the dark zone chests, which will be pretty cool i know a lot of people were wondering what the deal was with that so it's good to see that they fixed it also non-player enemies in the dark zone have been significantly increased in number so people who are wondering where all the enemies were won't have to wonder anymore apparently there's going to be a lot more to fight which is good news i'll be interested to see just how many more enemies there will be to fight in the dark zone also those non-player enemies have been buffed slightly so not only are there going to be more enemies but they are going to be more powerful this was the major issue that i had the manhunt timer now pauses instead of refreshing while in combat as level 5. This is going to fix everything that I had an issue with. When you were rogue level 5, it was almost impossible because when you would go into combat, it would reset your timer and you would have to go through the entire 5 minutes again, which was just a little ridiculous in my mind. Made it extremely, extremely difficult. So it's good to see that they addressed that. And also the reward for surviving as any level of a rogue agent has been increased to 1.5 times the kill bounty. It's good to know that we will actually be rewarded a little bit more significantly than we were in the closed beta. And now the health bar for agents in the dark zone now only turns red when they actually become rogue. Now we won't have friendlies shooting agents who they thought were rogue when really they were only red health bars who were shooting at other agents accidentally. Now there's a warning icon that has been added to indicate an agent who has shot another player but did not do enough damage to go rogue, which was indicated in the closed beta by that red health bar. The dark zone experience leveling curve has also been adjusted slightly. My guess would be they have lowered it a little bit because we could hit level 12 in literally an hour or two and if you even if you were rogue level 5 and you died it would never drop down so I'd say that this will fluctuate a lot more now a few other things uh, to fix cheaters they uh, disabled the option to transfer dark zone brackets as a rogue agent I never really experienced that but it's good to know that they fixed it they also removed some ropes that allowed players to reach areas that gave them an unfair advantage so these are just a few more balancing things that they took care of it's good to know that they did that they also added a 
new Ubisoft Club action available for participating in the open beta. This is going to unlock your exclusive item when the game launches, probably a cosmetic item or a weapon camo like I mentioned in one of my videos. Uh, new and improved tutorial videos, fix some bugs, allow players to become invisible, fix the exploit with the ballistic shield, cheat detection added, fixed mismatch stats, adjusted player movement speed while running with the grenade in hand so no one's going to be, uh, you know, the flash running across the map anymore, fixed a bug that caused players names and health bar not to be visible in dark zone. So just a lot of fixes here and there that are going to improve the overall experience of the open beta. And like I said, I'm going to add a link in the description box for everyone to go and check out these patch notes for themselves. There are a few more, but they're not as significant as the ones I already went over. But if you want to read them all for yourself, that resource will be there for you. But anyways, just want to let you guys know what was going on, what was going to be changing in the open beta. It seems like things are going to be improved. It's going to be a better experience. Knowing this, I'm probably going to play it a lot more now. At first, I wasn't going to play it as much simply because I played the closed beta for about 40 hours and had got my fill and I'm just ready to play the full game. But I'm definitely going to get in here and check this out. I want to play the new mission, play around with the turret, make some videos on that. So I'm excited to see all the things that they're changing and they're adding. But that's going to bring us to the end of the video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more The Division content. And until next time, don't trust anyone in the dark zone.